Conan, did you watch Raw? Yes. You know what, Chris Canyon, he had that um, he had that weird ag- New York accent. You know what he used to call Raw? Roar. Roar. R A W R. Roar. They seem yeah. to add an R to a lot of their words in New York. Yeah, they do. Um, uh, Raw did one point seven one million. Yeah, it's kind of a low number. Here, I think. I think basically lowest is, number since the end of the football season. Yeah, I think the fans. You know, Billy had a good point. Um, if like Logan Paul and Roman aren't on the show, I I think the fans kind of think that it's not it's not that big of a deal this week. You know, that might that might be true. Could be something to that. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So we got a. Uh, it opens up with an Edge promo. Um, but, but they, I don't want to get into this. It's, but basically, Edge challenges these guys to a match at, at, at you know, challenges. Um, it's a good promo, but basically, he challenged Balor to the uh, to the match at, at WrestleMania, and um, uh, basically, they they came in and attacked Edge. But then Johnny Gargano and Dexter Loomis showed up <laughs> to help Edge, and then that turned into a tag match, which ended with the baby faces that came to make the save getting beat by Damian Priest and Dominic. Any comment on this? This is a long opening segment because it's a long promo and a 14-minute match. I thought this was a good segment, mostly by Edge Finn, who I've liked for years. I think he needs to get better at promos, especially versus Edge, who can spit. Um, Them starting out the match hot really didn't click to me. It was like, why are they out there before their intros? Mm -hmm. Um, You know, cover stuff like that. It's it's easy to tell. Well, they attacked him. That's why they they, they ended up coming running out. But why? They attacked Edge. Oh, is that okay? Yeah, yeah, because Edge was in the ring by himself. They went and attacked Edge, and then they and so okay. then they came out for you. Know, yeah, yeah. Right. maybe you okay. missed that. So. All right, um, uh, and just the, the only thing is a a little bit too long. How long was this match? Fourteen minutes. Fourteen minutes. Yeah. yeah, I think that was a little too long. And when Lou, I love Priest's reaction when Lou did the kip the kip up. That was hilarious. Gargano's uh, so, slingshot spear looks good too. So, but. Yeah, so Kath- Kathy Kelly was interviewing the Miz, and um, Chad Gable showed up and asked if he noticed. And Miz pointed out that he just arrived at the building, blew off Gable. Then Kelly asked Miz if he would consider having a co-host. Miz laughed at the idea and asked her to name one star big enough. Then a few feet away from the interview, Damage Control showed up and attacked Trish Stratus, and they triple super kicked her, and a group of referees came in to help her. What did you think of this? It was all right. You know, was not bad and. It was it was better than usual. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So next was uh, Omos and MVP come out. I love the way they shot this. Right. Because Omos was in front and MVP was in back, and they shot it from the ground up and made it look like like Omos was like 15 feet tall, and yeah, like, like and like Omos, and like MVP was like a midget. Like they right, yeah. do that with Andre and Big John Studd. And right. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. 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 They shoot it right. You know, like it's there's a good visual. Um. So this was a weird segment. Okay. <laughs> Because basically they called they called Brock out. Brock kind of like got in his face to see how big he was, and then Lesnar almost stuck his hand in his face and just reached out and they shook and they shook hands. And basically, uh, Omas um, Lesnar stomped the foot of Omas because he wouldn't let go of his hand, and then he cleared him from the ring by sending him over the top rope on the second try. And the producer, the little Omas. Lesnar got thrown out of the ring, and the producers ran out. And Lesnar nodded, smiled, and backed away, despite Omos yelling at him to return to the ring. I, I don't. Well, this is a very weird segment to me. I, I a lot that. of uh, Twitter complaints, of course, about Omos uh, and the way he had trouble throwing Brock out and just not looking coordinated. You know. So here's the thing. You know, as you know, I've always said I didn't. I don't like Omos because I think he's green and he's very limited and he's kind of like on the job training. But I will say this. I do like because of what he used to wear before was really whack, the aviator jacket and all this. Other. Now they got him dressed up nice, kind of like MVP was mm-hmm. dressing him, you know, and um, and but this was awkward. It did nothing to make me want to see the match. I actually felt bad for almost because this was a chance to do something that would hook you for WrestleMania and they didn't. And uh, bro, when he clotheslined Brock, you know, Brock didn't go over the first time. So he had to literally like help him over the top. And Brock was selling his nose, and I'm wondering if he clotheslined him in the nose. Yeah. But this was not good, and and I wanted it to be good. Yeah, me too. Uh, so the interesting matchup: Cody Rose against LA Knight um, out of nowhere. Um, I wonder if they put Cody in here against LA Knight to see what type of reaction LA Knight and Cody would get, given that both these guys are kind of getting babyface reactions now. Mm-hmm. But Cody definitely got the better reaction. Um, Cody's reaction hadn't really stronger. died down. Yeah. Um, so he beats LA Knight, and after the match, there was a Cody Chan. He spoke about, and then he got the mic, and uh, 
He spoke about the warnings he was getting from Heyman about staying out of the Bloodlines business, and Cody said he doesn't work for Heyman or the Bloodlines, so he wants to fight alongside Sami Zayn or Kevin Owens, and he can do that. Cody also recalled home as Heyman saying not to make it personal, and Cody said that's a joke because it's been personal since he first appeared in the show when he was 21 years old. He says it's personal when he's choked up every week. Cody spoke about wearing a tailor suit, not because he thinks he is somebody, but because he wants to be somebody. Cody recalled Heyman saying he should acknowledge Roman Reigns. I acknowledge you, damn it. Rhodes said, you need to acknowledge me. And Cody said he's been perfect since he returned to WWE, and he said he grew up thinking he was a prince in the business, but he has no crown. He said he waited his whole life, and on April 2nd, he will pin Reigns, become the first member of his family to become the undisputed champion. And then he knelt down and kissed the man, went to ringside, and shook hands with a lot of the younger fans. He's their, he's their typical Vince McMahon babyface that like, Vince McMahon dreams of, you know? Right. People yeah. love him, uh, and um, he's got good delivery, a good mm-hmm. promo, and good fire. Yeah. Um, this was a good match, like really good match. Knights at star for sure. We've been saying that since for months. It ain't nothing new. Uh, I like the back way- when he was in Impact. You guys are yeah. Uh, I like the way they blocked. He, he blocked Knights' uh, tope and with a punch. You know that. And I also, um, bro, I thought that looked really cool when Knight jumped straight up to the top rope. You know, so he could hit that superplex. The Cody Cutter looked like a Cody Cutter on the juice. This was a good match and a good promo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so Seth Rollins was interviewed by Byron ba- Byron Saxon. And Saxon asked Rollins for his reaction to being knocked out by a Logan Paul sucker punch. And Rollins said Paul was acting like he won the lottery. That's because he landed the shot of a lifetime. And Rollins said the one thing people have learned about him is that he can't be kept out. Then the Miz showed up and said Rollins was just upset because Paul knocked him out with a single punch. Then the Miz informed Rollins that Paul would host a live edition of Impulsive TV. The Miz said he expects to be invited as a guest. And Baron Corbin showed up. This I thought this was funny. And said that his schedule just cleared up and he's available to be a guest. Uh-huh. The, the Miz said Paul's all booked up. And Corbin made a pitch to co-host WrestleMania with Miz, who passed. <laughs> then Corbin made a pitch to Rollins, who wasn't interested. Then Corbin got upset told Rollins that he's lucky they weren't fighting because he would knock out Rollins faster than Paul did and Rollins assumed that that was a challenge and said he see Corbett in the ring that, that I, was I, very good that was a this, good setup because the guy's dissing him he goes I'm a golden glove three time golden glove champion right you know what I'm saying and yeah so that was good this was good verbiage considering the spot it was just a bunch right. of guys like you know very well done right um Bronson Reed versus Elias did not make it to Hulu. So Bronson Reed beats Elias in two minutes. I didn't. Yeah, just a squash match. Elias is just, uh, he's all the way at the bottom, huh? Bro, he's cold as ice. He's not over anymore. Yeah. But he was with Rick Boogs. Yeah. Well, Boogs might might get deluded with him if he continues to hang out with him because Elias is like really nothing like he used to be before. Uh, Kathy Kelly stood backstage and tried to provide an update on Trish Stratus, but Chad Gable showed up and Gable had missing signs for Otis and asked if she'd seen him. Mm-hmm. Then Gable headed off to search for Otis. Then Becky Lynch and Lita stormed by. All right. Uh, so we get some explanation here from Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens was interviewed by Kathy Kelly and who asked why he won't accept Sami Zayn's help. And Owens said he needed help for a long time and he didn't get it. Now Sami's the one seeking his help. Owen said that he wishes Sammy the best, but he doesn't want any part of it. He recalled telling Cody Rose if he wants to help Zayn, that's his problem. And Owen said he wanted to fight alone, including when he fought Solo Sokoa later in the show. And Owen assumed that Sokoa wouldn't be alone and said he's fine with that. So he's set himself up to look stupid here, to be honest with you. Um, this was this was one of my favorite spots in the show coming up. Okay, It's footage from earlier in the day. And the Street Profits, Montez Ford, and Angelo Dawkins were mocking Austin Theory over the Cena segment. Theory said he hoped the Profits continue to be good at what they're doing because they would probably be unemployed in a couple months. And Theory said he always gets what he wants and his match with Cena will be the biggest match at WrestleMania. Theory claimed to be the most important thing in WWE and Theory wondered who was the toughest member of the Street Profits. Theory settled on Dawkins and told Ford that he's just a big bag of jokes. Then Theory said when Ford is handed an opportunity, he falls flat on his face. Then Theory said he wished he could relate, but when he gets an opportunity, he goes straight to the top. Then Theory spoke about the smoke that the Prophets mentioned and said Ford just chokes. Then Dawkins stepped up and challenged Theory to a match. And Theory asked the Prophets what they're doing at WrestleMania. Oh, that's right. Nothing, Theory said before laughing and walking away. The reason I like this is this is what the WWE does differently than AEW. AEW announces a match, okay? Then they have an interview with the guy talking about the guy he's supposed to fight. You really don't say much. Because, like, what am I going to say? I'm going to beat you this year because i got a match with you. Bro, this was an interview that because they had words with each other, it turned into a match. Right. That, that's, that's the way you're supposed to do this. And not like, only that, guys- they did something very clever. Um, Austin sounding like a by going, oh, that's right, you're not in WrestleMania. Now you want Dawkins to kick his ass. Right. You know? mm-hmm. yeah. That was very well done. So he wrestled Dawkins. Of course, he's going over and he beats him. But uh, 
Uh, he then after the match, he put him in the John Cena's FTF. Right. Okay, and then Montez Ford ran out and caused the theory to, to release a hold. And the theory said, "You can't see me while standing on the floor." That was a good little spot. So he's going to wrestle. He's going to wrestle Ford next week. Um, <clears throat> Paul Heyman was interviewed by Kathy Kelly, and Heyman stormed on the set and said the Bloodline has a problem in Kevin Owens. And Heyman said the problem be solved by Solo. He said Cody Rose has a problem, and he said Cody believes the truth shall set him free, but he's making stupid mistakes by making things personal with Roman Reigns. Heyman said, of course it's personal to Cody, but that's what makes him such a compelling, intriguing challenge at WrestleMania, but he called him a schmuck for mockingly acknowledging Reigns. And Heyman said he would give Rose a chance to acknowledge Reigns in person next week on Raw. Heyman said Rose would acknowledge his tribal chief, and he said Cody would determine whether he's a challenger or a problem. And Heyman said if that's the latter, Reigns would love to personally solve it. Um, I'm going to make a prediction. What, what, what was Raw's number this week, Joe? Raw's number was 1.71 million. It might be 1.9 to 2.2 million next week because they've got Logan Paul and they've got Roman Reigns on the show, and I think that's by design. Uh, mm. You know, well, what, what do you think, Conan? Um, uh, what's the question again? Uh, I think what they do you might think about. Yeah, good. Yeah, they, they got a pretty stacked interest next week because you got Roman confronting Cody again, and you got Logan Paul having the impulsive live with the, the but that like you, you got star power on the show next week. You know. Right. And what's the question? Well, I don't, what did you think of that? Yeah, that, I, that's I, why I agree. Doing. I think the ratings will go up. Yeah. Uh, so Ray Ray comes out for promo. He thanked the crowd, and they gave the You Deserve a Chance. And uh, Ray recalled celebrating 20 years later, now celebrating the biggest honor of his life. He said the award is for all of us, and the Judgment Day interrupted again. Dominic walked out with a mic in his hand and mockingly congratulated his father for finally making it to the WWE Hall of Fame. And Dom said Ray actually deserves it because he put his entire life in the business, and Dom said he hopes it was worth it. Uh, he got the you suck chance too. He's got he gets good heat. Great. Uh, he entered yeah. the ring while saying that Ray earned the honor at his expense, and Don said Ray chose all the stranger fans rather than being there for his own children. Um, Dom took issue with Ray promising him a new car and recalled his friends all got new Mercedes while Ray only got a BMW and it wasn't even an M series. Dom complained. <laughs> Dom called Ray a sad excuse for father, then took it back and called him a sad excuse of a man. And Dom said he would let Ray enjoy his Hall of Fame intro- induction, but then challenge him to a match at WrestleMania. Ray said he wouldn't fight his son, and the fans booed. He said he loved Dom and he always would, and added there'd be no match at WrestleMania. Then Dom asked the fans if that was their Hall of Famer as Ray exited the ring, and Dom told Ray to do what he does by running. Dom said Ray ran from Raw, his family, and him, and Dom said the only thing Ray taught him was what not to be. Then Ray turned to look back at Dom and then headed to the back. Ray's had good facial expressions during this whole angle. Yeah, with the know? mask on, too. Yeah, with the mask on, too. But you can tell he's right. He's upset. You know, It's good stuff. Uh, what did you think about this? I thought it was great. You know, yeah. One of the best storylines they have going. Yeah. So Kathy Kelly sent us out of the trainings room and an update on Trish Stratus, and Stratus, Becky Lynch, and Lita emerged in the room, and they all agreed that damage control should have finished the job. And Trish said she's been hit harder, and they all comp- accomplished was pissing her off. Uh, so the Miz comes out, and Graves said Miz was sitting on commentary for the next match, and and it was Baron Corbin versus uh, Seth Rollins. Um, so Rollins, so... The referee called for the bell to start the match, and Rollins closed like Corbin over the top and then hit him with a suicide dive with the crowd chanting in his entrance scene. Then Rollins jawed at Miz, who said Seth's entrance scene was the most annoying song he's heard in his entire life. Then Rollins threw Corbin, and, threw Corbin onto Miz, and a short time later, Miz went after Rollins, who caught him with a kick as he entered the ring, and Rollins launched himself off of Miz's back and then put Corbin away with a stomp that led to the three count. Bro, that very, was great. Very perfectly done sequence. What a great finish. And, and bro, because that sequence was so well done... You didn't need a six, seven minute match before this. Right. Like that just came, that spot and the stuff that just came out of nowhere, it was very, just done, done perfectly. They, very creative. They, yeah, they just very, they, they nail it every time on these finishes. Everybody's, yeah. you know, hits their cues. So yeah, they're hitting on all cylinders right now. Um, all right. So the next thing is I did not, did not make it to Hulu. Chad Gable continued his backstage search for Otis, and Mustafa, Mustafa Ali popped out and tried to talk, but Gable blew him off. Then Gable found Otis taking part in a photo shoot with the Maximum Male Models. Then Gable said Mansoir was supposed to have a match, and Mansoir said he broke his nail scrolling through Instagram, so his match was proposed, postponed until next week. And Gable told Otis that he'd be a model with him, and Gable jumped in the shoot. Then Mansoir came that Gable broke his camera, and May said Gable broke it with his ick. Then Maxine Dupree went off about Tom Sandoval and then called Otis called for Otis to join her because he had work to do. Then Gable tried to get Otis to leave with him, but he opted to follow the models. What did you think of this? I think this is going to be a lot of funny stuff because Otis is naturally funny, and Gable will probably somehow be in there trying to get involved, and he's funny. 
And I think this might, we might see some good stuff. So, Sky, I guess uh, this didn't make it to Hulu either, but this looks like some lame stuff uh, from the women's. You got a Bianca Belair versus Chelsea Green, a non-title match. Uh, Belair goes over clean with the, with the KOD. After the match, Carmella entered the ring and ended up working over Belair. Then Asuka ran out and joined Belair and taking back and forth shots at Green. Then Asuka picked up the women's title and held it out for Belair, but then yanked it away a couple times. And Asuka danced and swayed with the belt. Belair got annoyed, and Asuka smiled, let miss come out of her mouth, and laughed maniacally while she shut the belt down. Did this make you interested in their match? Absolutely not. I didn't see miss come out of her mouth, did it? I don't know. I, I just did not make it to the yes. Okay, what, what was that for? I, I guess it was that. like a like a veiled threat, if you will. Hmm. Maybe. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. Um, uh, they had a couple. Go- Here's the problem, bro. It doesn't look good when two baby faces are beating up on a heel like right. Green, and she doesn't really have heat yet. So the people weren't into this. Yeah. You know, if it was a heel that really had heat, and she deserves an ass whooping, yeah. But she had, she hasn't. You know, she needs some victories and some dastardly deeds. That's a very white word uh, <laughs> for um. You know. To get some heat, you know what I'm saying, Di? Yeah, yeah. Um, so this was another. I thought this was well done. Uh, Solo against Kevin Owens in a street fight, a good, decent brawling. Uh, so they they're chasing these. You know, uh, Sokoa is going to the be- going to the back, and he goes in that backstage area where they have the interviews. You know, before they come out for their matches, and he was met with two super kicks uh, from um from the blood from the bloodline. And then they dragged him. They, each of them All grabbed the his hand and they dra- yeah. dragged him like a wagon, right? Uh, like, like you know, dragged him on the floor to like the ring. Yeah. yeah. And then ba- basically Solo hit him with the with the the thumb thing and then pinned him. Right. And you know, and that was uh that was it basically the end of the show. But that was a good, good brother. They're keeping Solo strong. Real strong. And I'm wondering, I'm wondering where they're going with Solo and and Cody because like you keep you know. Solo keeps like looking at Cody with that side eye, you know, like so. so I don't know if Cody, you know, I don't know. We'll see. I think but Solo is- might uh, go up in the main event and cost Roman the belt, and then lead to Roman and Solo. You know. Well, I don't know about that. Maybe we'll see. I'll mark that down, Joe. Mm-hmm. We'll see if you see if it comes true. You got um, it. But that's been our raw review. Enjoy the rest of the show. Boom. <laughs>